Now when you pick cotton with a picker, you're going to put it in the module builder. And you're going to do the same with this cotton, but what it's going to do is pick cotton up off the ground. You never want to mix cotton from a ground cotton with stock cotton because the quality will be very, very low and it will hurt your grades because cotton has to receive a grade to sell it. So cotton that comes up off the ground, if they pick it up, is called moats after it's gin and it's used for furniture fillers, mattresses and things like that. It's a very poor quality of cotton. This is pulled by a tractor. The brushes run by friction, so they're going to sweep the cotton into the bed. And then these belts um, have uh, slits in them. And so as they travel over the ground, they're going to pinch the cottons on the ground, put it in the mat, the basket. And I'm so sorry. Let me just, um, I would be willing to bet it's a telemarketer. Um, <laughs> and so anyway, so that, that's how it works. And as I said, it's gin but it's ginned separately. They do all the moats after ginning season because it's such a poor quality of cotton. How do you spell moats? M-O-T-E-S. And the guy that invented it, his last name was Rude. It was invented in Gilbert, Arizona. Mm -hmm. And it's, they have one in a, in a um, museum. Uh, we can still buy parts for it. You just can't buy roots anymore. And um, they just don't like, the gins don't like to gin it because it'll mess up the saw blades too. But you need a certain amount of it. And so, um, we keep this one and people want to borrow it but you know and we no problem we'll let them borrow it but um, they don't pick up a lot of ground cotton and I thought oh we'll go into custom harvesting you know pick it up everybody has roots when we have ground cotton they come out from the woodwork they're everywhere but every now and then we'll end up you know somebody will borrow this one from us so anyway just wanted to show you the three pieces of equipment we use so the cotton picker the module builder and the root we're gonna walk over here and then we're gonna go in the building power equipment down there, the utility company, goes over to 11 mile corner and then it goes just past this cotton field, there's some solar panels, so it goes over there. So that's what 255 acres looks like. This is a canal, it comes off of a main canal that's located right at the end of this canal. This is called a lateral canal. Our water comes from the San Carlos Irrigation District, and so it's in the Gila River watershed. If you look over there about 100 miles, there's a dam called Coolidge Dam and it flows down the, the Gila River, and then it's diverted into canals, and it um, is delivered to us on the main canal. We have to get it to our farm on laterals. So this is a lateral. We don't take water out of this. It goes to the farms to the north of us. We have a lateral over there and over there, and that's what brings water to our farm. And I'll talk to you about our, our field leveling and all that stuff in the building. So let's go ahead and go in the building. Um, we can't get in that door. What are those? those These nice little pretty bowls. They're going to look like this, and if you don't know what to do with them, you can leave a stem on them and put them in a vase, or you can turn them upside down and put a little head on them and make a Christmas angel. <laughs> whole cotton field and I buy these things. <laughs> and um, you can also take a stalk and put it in flower arrangements, and they're very, very pretty. And then when we get back from the field, I, well, I've given you your handouts, so we don't have to do that. But in your handouts, I've given you kiosk flyers. So if you have a good time today and learn a lot and enjoy it, tell others about it. And this is a flyer you can share. If you didn't have a good time, don't tell anybody where you went. <laughs> Works. Then I have this nice little uh, pamphlet that we publish. And on the inside is a little, this tells you how to plant the seeds I've given you. And I give you a little clay pot. That's for your alfalfa seed. Cotton seed is too, it's too small. It needs a larger container because it needs to be planted deeper and it's going to be a much larger plant. If you plant your alfalfa seeds in a few weeks, they're going to start to grow and look like this. And you can let them grow a little bit more, cut them out, wash them, and put them on a salad or a sandwich. Now, here's a little demonstration using an apple. The apple represents our world. This was done by American Farm Bureau. If you follow the directions, you're going to cut the apple up into pieces. When you get done, you're going to end up with a 1 32nd sliver of the apple minus the good part that we eat. So just the skin of the apple. That's the part of our earth that we live on and we grow our food. So do this for kids, teachers, and politicians. They can use a bit of it. <laughs> now, over here on the next two pages, I've summed up what I'm going to talk about in here. So a little bit of, you know, you can kind of look at that. Have you ever heard the term fair to middling? Oh, yeah. It's a cotton grading term, and we'll be talking about that. Over here is information on the cottonseed oil industry. It's huge, and I'll be talking about cottonseed oil. Your cookies have them in there today, cottonseed oil. 
Over here is um, Arizona Ag Facts. Now, this is an interesting page. This is called Bounty Per Bell. So we pick the cotton out of the field. Remember, it goes to the gin and has to have the seed and fiber removed. They have to have a way to transport it, so they pack it into cotton bales. So this cotton bale is 503 pounds and came off of my farm. It's mill ready. That means we could sell it if we wanted to, but we want it here for tours. <laughs> this logo on the front means that it was grown in the United States. If you see this on clothing sheets and towels, look on this edge. Mm -hmm. See it? The, mm -hmm. the cotton logo? I can't yet. Oh. Sorry, I'm kind of... Oh, there it is. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. That means that it was grown and milled in the United States. And so I got really excited about it because I was in Joanne's Fabrics. Now, keep in mind, I don't sew, right? But I saw this on the edge, and I thought, you know what? I've got to... Oh, did you get it? Mm -hmm. I've got to buy this and bring it out here and show it to everybody. I couldn't wait till my next program. So the room was packed, and there's ladies sitting out there. And I said, look on this edge. It's the cotton logo. It means grown and milled in the United States. And she said, um, excuse me? That's called the salvage edge. I'm a retired home ec teacher. <laughs> and I was like, and I was your worst nightmare because I failed it. <laughs> and so anyway, what can I say? Out of this, you can get 22,000 women's handkerchiefs. Or you can get 8,000 men's handkerchiefs. I'm not going over that. And then over here is a list of the ores, which you can get out of a cotton bale. Or? So, yeah, you know, like oh, or handkerchiefs, or diapers, or oh, shirts. Oh, oh. Gotcha. Now, over here, I have recipes from our family, our friends, and some of my volunteers at the University of California. I used to teach a lot about vegetable crops. So I've been putting in a guide here on how to store produce and keep it fresh the longest. It's in here. Okay, and then on the back page are some of our favorite places to go see and do around this area, Florence, Coolidge, and all that. And so you've got all those. They're in your, your handouts. And... Um, yeah, in, in the car. Mm -hmm. So now, um, I'm going to introduce ourselves. This was my granddad on that black and white. He bought, this, oops, he bought the farm in 1930. And um, he had to sign an agreement with the San Carlos Irrigation District saying that he would never drill a well and he would pay a water assessment. He could not, so he had no water unless he was willing to be in the St. Carl's District. And he wanted to be because it was a new source of water. Well, the water assessment is attached to taxes. And it's to help repay the cost of the dam, employee costs, things like that. We're still paying that today. And it's $19,000 by a year. And so, and it is attached to our taxes. So for some reason, we cannot meet that. We can lose our land. And because of the drought, there's been several years that we couldn't, um, we, didn't, we couldn't grow anything. So we do lease land. So we have um, a lot of lease land in another irrigation district. Unfortunately, it's, it's facing some of the same problems, but we'll talk more about that. Okay, so he gifted the farm to my parents in the 60s, and they were busy farming out by Stanfield. Well, when they retired, um, my dad had it leased out, but my son was growing up and he wanted to take over the lease. So, um, but here's my parents. My dad grew up out here. He was born, he was pretty much raised out here his whole life. Now, um, he went to the University of Arizona after high school, and then from there, he uh, was called, he, the war broke out. So he served in World War II. He came back and married my mom, and they were married 73 years. We lost them both in 2021, and it was very hard, because they died within seven months of each other. And we still had questions. You know, they gifted the farm to my sister and I by that time, but we still had a lot of questions. And so anyway... Um, is that, I'm sorry, is that Tom and Sammy? Yes, Tom and Sammy. So here they are, right there. On the tractor. On the tractor. Now, my mother was really ornery. And um, she wanted to see every gopher on this farm dead. Now, we have a red ant problem. And what they do is they get in and they eat out the roots of alfalfa and cotton, different things like that. So we feed them the Last Supper, we house and gallons. Or think of a football field with a 12-inch wall around it, and that's how you can visualize an acre foot. So a lot of people are moving into our area, and they see these farms, and they don't like to see alfalfa because farmers use 75% of the water. But we do like to eat, right? <laughs> and so anyway, um, alfalfa, when you water it, it's not going to drink all that water. Some of it's going to go and recharge the underground aquifer, and that's a good thing. The other thing it prov provides kind of is like a little wildlife habitat for the gophers, I guess. But anyway, um, 
So the, if you go into the grocery store and you trace back your food to how you grow it, if you go in the dairy section and the meat section, you know the cows eat it, right? But if you go into, say, like the nutrition section, you'll find it in whey powder. You'll find um, milk or milk byproducts in uh, cereals, cream soups. There's so many places in the store that depend on alfalfa for the product. So we're real proud of it. Um, as I said, we get eight to 10 cuttings a year. We get more in the summer, I'm so sorry. Ooh, I don't take this one, I'm sorry. Remember that time we passed a field where it was just all kinds of those yellow bundles in the field? Those are fine. Yeah. 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 I'm sorry, it's just so cold. And my son is driving it. He's speeding. He's speeding. Pardon? Is that cutting it? Yes, it's cutting the hay. It's like a big lawnmower. Yeah. It looks like a lawnmower. It does. He did not slow on the turn for your viewing purposes. That's all. Just so it's laying it on the ground. Oh, okay. So what we're going to do, you can see it laying there. What we're going to do is use a swather, I mean a hay rake, and we're going to rake it into windrows. Now, in these windrows, it needs to set for several days because it's got moisture in it. It is combustible. So we have to be careful and probe it before we bale it. We're going to bale usually in three-wire, 125-pound bales. But really, it's how the dairy wants it. Sometimes we don't bale it. It's green chopped. It's just taken to the dairy like that. Sometimes the dairy wants bigger bales. They want 1,800-pound bales. It's however they want it, it's, you know, because they're our buyer. So when we do have the bales, we're going to pick them up using a road slider. So it's just, we don't have to hand bucket anymore. We just pick it up with this. This holds three and a half tons. Is it bailing it also? No, it's already bailed. So it's just picking it up. You can see the bales on the field. So now they're going to bring it up to the house lot and stack it. And then whoever buys it transports it. We do not transport. You will see hay out there today. We usually have it sold by the time it comes out of the field. Uh, two years ago, the hay market was $240 a ton. Right now, it's less than 100 So we're holding hay right now in case, in, you know, because we don't want to sell it at that price. We're hoping that it comes up a little bit, so we'll have to make choices with it. And what caused that? There, it, this is complicated, but there's some Middle Eastern farmers over that was t using our water, and the, the Saudi, I don't know if you heard about it, but they were, they were allowed as much groundwater as they wanted, yes. and it was kind of um, snuck through by one of our governors. Well, people were getting angry at it, because it didn't employ anybody from the United States. So our newest governor put a halt to it. Well, then they got mad they wouldn't take any excess hay either. And so it left uh, everybody with an overabundant supply. And, so, and then they went to Utah, and they're producing quite a bit of hay, and some of it goes to Saudi and some goes to the open market. So it, cut, it drove our prices down. So we'll have to see what happens there. Um, we can grow, we can get eight to 10 cuttings a year. And as I said, some people only get one to three. And so when it's snowing and they can't get hay, we can ship. So probably in the next couple of months, there'll be more of a demand for it so we can sell and then ship. There's a place right down here called Matt's Hay Barn and they ship all over the This odd piece of equipment is called a ground brood. Now when you pick cotton with a picker, you're gonna put it in the module builder and you're gonna do the same with this cotton, but what it's gonna do is pick cotton up off the ground. You never want to mix cotton from a ground cotton with stock cotton because the quality will be very, very low and it will hurt your grades because cotton has to receive a grade to sell it. So cotton that comes up off the ground, if they pick it up, is called moats after it's gin and it's used for furniture fillers, mattresses and things like that. It's a very poor quality of cotton. This is pulled by a tractor. The brushes run by friction, so they're going to sweep the cotton into the bed and then these belts um, have uh, slits in them. And so as they travel over the ground, they're going to pinch the cottons on the ground, put it in the mat, the basket, and I'm so sorry. Let me just, um, I would be willing to bet it's a telemarketer. Um, <laughs> and so anyway, so that, that's how it works. And as I said, it's gin, but it's gin separately. They do all the moats after ginning season because it's such a poor quality of cotton. How do you spell moats? M-O-T-E-S. 
And the guy that invented it, his last name was Rude. It was invented in Gilbert, Arizona. Mm -hmm. And it's, they have one in a, in a um, museum. Uh, we can still buy parts for it. You just can't buy Rudes anymore. And um, they just don't like, the gins don't like to gin it because it'll mess up the saw blades too. But you need a certain amount of it. And so um, we keep this one and people want to borrow it, but you know, and we, no problem, we'll let them borrow it. But um, they don't pick up a lot of ground cotton. And I thought, oh, we'll go into custom harvesting, you know, pick it up. Everybody has roots. When we have ground cotton, they come out from the woodwork. They're everywhere. But every now and then we'll end up, you know, somebody will borrow this one from us. So anyway, just wanted to show you the three pieces of equipment we use. So the cotton picker, the module builder, and the rood. We're going to walk over here, and then we're going to go in the building.